Okay, let's continue. So, uh, in the previous example, we made two attempts. Okay, we we made two plans to create our um, intervals. Okay, we recall that here today at this moment we are facing a unknown population parameter. Okay, mu is unknown at any time. What we want to do is to create a interval. We're going to first get the sample mean, okay, and then use the sample mean to open an interval, and hopefully we can cover the ran the unknown mu, okay. The only thing that we want to decide is how large should be our interval, how long should be the leg length. Obviously, leg length decides the probability for us to cover, to really cover, to contain the population mean, like here. When we choose square root of 2 to be our, uh, to be our leg length, the probability for us to be right is 68%. When we make it longer to be 2 square root of 2, the probability becomes 95%, and so on and so on. According to the introduction in the previous video, you actually know, given any number as your leg length, you are able to use the right formula to calculate this probability. Okay, You can always do that. In statistics, when we do interval estimation, we call that covering probability or heat probability to be our confidence level okay and the interval is called the confidence interval so that means whenever you create a confidence interval you hope that you are able to calculate the confidence level that's the probability for the unknown population mean to really fall inside our interval or say it in another way. That's really the probability for our estimation to be right. Okay? We estimate, we say, mu is within here and there. We want to know what's the probability for that to be true. How may we choose the interval length? Well, we know that a larger confidence interval always results in higher confidence. So there's really a trade-off between accurate estimation and high confidence. High confidence means the probability for us to be right is higher. And unfortunately, accurate, accurate estimation requires your leg length, which we know it would be, your leg length to be small. If you choose a small leg length, the heating probability would be small, and then you have low confidence. If you need a high confidence, you need a longer leg length and then your estimation becomes less accurate. So to find the relationship, well, given any number, you know how to calculate this probability. Okay, Given any number, you know how to calculate the probability. Or in general, given a leg length, your probability of your confidence level is just can be calculated with this formula. Your x bar has a normal distribution that you know. Okay, you know an uh, x bar must be normal within uh, with parameters mu and the sigma over square root of two, a uh, square root of n. Sorry. Okay, so given b, what you really want to calculate is really this. So what's that? Uh, recall that what you want is for your x bar to be within mu uh, within an interval centering at mu okay and this is mu minus b this is mu plus b when you calculate this that's the probability for your x bar to be smaller than that if I depict that normal curve like this then you are calculating the left tail probability for x bar, for x bar to be so small. You also need the right tail probability for x bar to be that large, 
but you don't need to do the calculation twice because they are going to be the same, right? So given a leg length, we want to calculate the probability for us to be right, which is 1 minus the probability for us to be wrong, following this formula. <coughs> so if we really do all the calculations for a lot of given uh, leg length, we can calculate, we can draw a line, a curve like this. Okay, When you have a larger leg length, then you are going to have a larger confidence level, naturally. Okay, And for example here, these are our two examples. Here, this is square root of 2, this is 2 square root of 2, and you get around 68% and around 95%. So, and you can repeat this for all other values and eventually show that indeed, when your leg length becomes larger, your confidence level becomes larger. In general, people actually do it in a somewhat reversed way. We typically first choose a confidence level first, and then find the smallest interval that can achieve this level. Okay, So we actually first choose a confidence level, and then try to see how large the interval should be. So uh, let's um, go through this process. So we're going to first denote the error probability as alpha. Okay, in statistics, when we say alpha, that typically refers to the error probability in estimation. In that case, the confidence level would just be 1 minus alpha. And in practice, people prefer to use these three confidence levels, 90%, 95%, or 99%. Okay, if you want to be somewhat um, conservative, you probably you choose 99%. If you want to be having a smaller uh, interval, you probably choose 90%. And then, given any number, you are able to calculate the leg length just following the formula, right? You have this formula, and you need this to be your given confidence interval. So given this to be 90%, you are able to calculate B you are able to calculate B. Or in general, you are trying to calculate this probability as alpha over 2. Alpha over 2. That's what you want to do. So given alpha to be 10%, we want to find B such that the left tail probability is 5%. Given alpha to be 5%, we want the left tail probability to be 2.5% and so on and so on. That's the general thing we want to do. That's the general thing we want to do. Okay, so from here, if we want a 90% interval, our leg length can be calculated as around 2.3. If you want 95%, you need around 2.8. If you want 99%, you need around 3.7. Okay, this is something you can do and something we typically will do. So let's go back to our motivating example about daily consumers. Recall that we have this amount of stores and we have 3,000 numbers as our population. There is the population mean, but we don't know it. We collected data and get 7 observed values. Okay, 7 observed values. Oh, um, their values are here so that we can calculate the realized sample mean which is 960. So how would we do an interval estimation in this example? We, so far, all we know is the technique with a known population variance. So let's assume sigma is 120. And let's just assume that. We also need that the population to be normal. Okay, But let's go somewhat one step further. Suppose the population is not normal, but your sample size is large, but your sample size is at least 30. Then what do you have? Your 
uh, in this case, your sample mean would also be normal, right? Because you have that central limit theorem. So you really understand that we need, we assumed your population to be normal because we want your sample mean to be normal. But if you have a large enough sample size, then you really don't need that normal population assumption. Anyway, here, let's assume our population is normal. Okay, so we have this, we have that, everything is fine. Now we are ready to construct a confidence interval. Let's try to get three intervals, one for 90%, one for 95%, and one for 99% of confidence levels. First one, uh, first step one, calculate the sample mean, which is simple. Step two, calculate the standard deviation of the sample mean, or calculate the standard error which is sigma over square root of n, 100 over square root of 7, you will be able to verify it's around 45. And then with this, and then we are able to calculate the leg lengths, which is around 74, 88, and 116. Okay, We can do that following those normal distribution formulas. Okay. So we can get three different leg lengths. And then the interval with 90% confidence level would be found by putting x bar at the center, at the center, and go to the left and go to the right by the leg length. So for the 90% confidence level, it's around 80, 885 to 1034. For the other two intervals, you can also calculate them according to the same uh, formula. Okay, so that's about calculation. Once you have that, you actually can do some interpretations and make some conclusion about your business environment. So let's consider the interval with 95% confidence level first. Okay. Is around 600, uh, 870 to 1000 and around, well, around 1050. The business implication we have is the following We will claim that the true average daily consumers will be within 870 and 1050. Okay, that's our claim. That's our claim. We make this claim based on our observed sample mean and our observed uh, or the, the, the population standard deviation that we know and your sample size. Okay? With all this information and your knowledge about normal distribution, you make this claim. And the best thing is that you know you are 95% confident. It is quite unlikely for us to be wrong. The probability for this claim to be wrong is just 5%. Okay? And recall that your marketing manager has promised that the average daily consumer with that special discount would be at least 850. Okay? Now, with this fact, with this 95% confidence, we have a strong evidence showing that the target is really achieved. Okay? You don't really need to collect 3,000 values. You only collected 7 values. And because that 7 values, the sample mean is large enough, and because you have all this knowledge about probability sampling distributions, you are 95% confident that this target is really achieved really achieved okay but it's also interesting to look at the 99% confidence interval unfortunately this interval the, the lower bound of your interval now is 843 which is lower than 850 so that means you know with a 99% probability your mu would be somewhere here okay you know that's going to be true with 99% probability. But that means mu may be less than 850. Okay? 
So you cannot make any conclusion with this particular interval. You cannot say with a 99% confidence mu is above 850. You cannot say that because according to this, mu may be 845, for example. You also cannot conclude that mu is below 850. Okay, you just cannot do that. So you can be 95% confident about achieving this target, but you cannot be 99% confident. If you want, you may try some numbers between uh, these two percentages, such that uh, something like 97%, 98%, uh, so that you, you can get some interval that is less lower bound is greater than 850, then you can say you are that confident. Okay. Of course, we will never be 100% confident, but the value of statistical estimation is to be able to measure how confident we are. How confident we are. Okay, so a quick summary. When we have an unknown population mean, but when we have a known population variance, we can construct a confidence interval. First, we want to calculate the sample mean. We are going to put that at the center, and we will find some leg densities so that we can cover mu with a predetermined probability. Well, that's something we do. With the desired confidence level, which is 1 minus alpha, and the standard error that you know how to calculate, we can find the desired, the required deck length, so that we're going to have this plan about suggesting an interval in this way, and the really the real interval that we are going to suggest that we will suggest is based on the realized value. Okay, so before you do that, this is really a plan, a strategy, and after you do that, this is the output of your estimation. We need one of the following two things. Either your population is normal, or your sample size is at least 30. If you have each of them, you can apply the methodology we just introduced. If you fail to have both either of them, then uh, you just cannot do that. Okay? Because if you do that, you will get a very large error probability. Okay, thank you.